Welcome everybody to another video of Ancient Greece Reloaded. Today we will talk about the famous Iphigenia, the daughter of King Agamemnon and Queen Clytemnestra. By the way, if you like the video, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so to stay tuned for upcoming videos. Iphigenia was born a princess of Mycenae, for Iphigenia was most commonly called a daughter of King Agamemnon and Queen Clytemnestra. Thus, Iphigenia was sister to Orestes, Electra and Chrysothemis. On her mother's side, Iphigenia had some famous relatives, with Helen, wife of Menelaus, being her aunt, and grandparents in the form of Tyndareus and Leda. Via Agamemnon, though, Iphigenia was a member of the cursed house of Atreus, for her grandfather was Atreus, her great-grandfather Pelops, and her great-great-grandfather was Tantalus. A less common version of the story of Iphigenia gives different parentage for the girl, for then it is said that Iphigenia was in fact the daughter of Theseus and Helen, born when the Athenian hero had abducted Helen from Sparta. Helen had subsequently given her daughter to her sister Clytemnestra, who had raised it as her own. The story of Iphigenia is not one that appears in the Iliad, the work of Homer, although Homer does make mention of a daughter of Agamemnon called Iphianassa, which may or may not be an alternate name for Iphigenia. Much of the tale of Iphigenia is thus taken from other writers including Evripides. Now, as a member of the house of Atreus, Iphigenia was perhaps doomed from birth, but whilst many members of the house of Atreus only added to their predicament by their actions, Iphigenia was innocent of what was to befall her. Whilst Iphigenia was relatively young, events which would lead to the Trojan War would begin to unfurl. In the absence of Menelaus, Paris came from Troy abducting Helen and stealing Spartan treasure. Thus, it was that the suitors of Helen were called upon to uphold the oath of Tyndareus, to protect Menelaus and to bring back Helen from Troy. Now, Iphigenia's father had not been a suit of Helen, but he was the most powerful king of the era, and so Agamemnon became the commander for all the heroes and men, who responded to the call to arms, and as a result, at Avlis, an armada of thousand ships gathered. With ships and men ready, there was but one problem, an ill wind meant that the Achaeans could not sail for Troy. It was the seer Calchas who told Agamemnon that the goddess Artemis was angered by one amongst the Achaean army. That one normally said to be Agamemnon, and for that reason Artemis had decided to keep the Achaean fleet at Avlis. Various reasons are given why Artemis might have been angered, but commonly it was said that the hubris of Agamemnon, comparing himself with the hunting skill of the goddess, was to blame. It was also Calchas who told Agamemnon the method by which Artemis could be appeased. A sacrifice was required, but not a normal one a human sacrifice, and the only suitable victim was to be Iphigenia. The idea of human sacrifice was a reoccurring one in Greek mythology, although not a common one, but human sacrifices were offered to the Minotaur, while Tantalus and Lycaon killed their own sons to make an offering to the gods. As to whether Agamemnon was agreeable to the possibility of Iphigenia being sacrificed depends on the ancient source being read. Some tell of Agamemnon deciding to call off the war, rather than sacrificing his daughter, whilst others tell that Agamemnon saw it as his duty to do what Calchas suggested. Even if Agamemnon was not willing though, it would appear that he was eventually convinced by his brother Menelaus, for plans for the sacrifice of Iphigenia were made. Iphigenia was in Mycenae at that time, when the ships gathered at Avlis, and there was no way in which her mother Clytemnestra could be convinced to sacrifice her daughter, and so Agamemnon did not even try. Instead, a lie was told to bring Iphigenia and Clytemnestra to Avlis. Agamemnon would send word back to Mycenae via Odysseus and Diomedes, who told Clytemnestra that it had been arranged for Iphigenia to marry Achilles. Such a marriage was a highly suitable one for Iphigenia, and as a result, Iphigenia and her mother came to Avlis, at which point Iphigenia and Clytemnestra were separated. With a sacrificial altar constructed, Iphigenia would have been very aware of what was to befall here, but most ancient sources tell of Iphigenia willing climbing on the altar, believing that her death was necessary and it would become known as a heroic death. A problem did arise when it came to who was going to sacrifice Iphigenia, for none of the assembled Achaean heroes were willing to kill the daughter of Agamemnon. Eventually, it was left to Calchas, the man who had said that the sacrifice was necessary, to kill Iphigenia, and so the seer wielded the sacrificial knife. In the simplest versions of the Iphigenia myth, Iphigenia's life came to an end by Calchas' knife, 
but few human sacrifices ended as they were supposed to in Greek mythology. For even in the case of Pelops, the son of Tantalus was brought back to life after he had been killed by his father. Thus, it became common to say that in the end Iphigenia was not actually sacrificed. And as Calchas brought down the knife to kill the daughter of Agamemnon, the goddess Artemis intervened, spiriting Iphigenia away and substituting Adia in the girl's place. Artemis though ensured that all those who witnessed the sacrifice of Iphigenia did not recognize that a substitution had taken place. After the sacrifice had been performed though, the ill winds that had kept the Achaean fleet at Avlis abated and the journey to Troy could begin. The sacrifice or supposed sacrifice of Iphigenia would have deadly consequences for Agamemnon. Agamemnon would survive 10 years of fighting at Troy and yet on his return home to Mycenae he was murdered. In his absence fighting Agamemnon's five, Clytemistra had taken herself a lover in the form of Aegisthus. Aegisthus had many reasons for wanting Agamemnon dead, but it was commonly said that Clytemistra had but one reason for wanting her husband's death, the fact that her husband had arranged for the killing of the daughter. Thus, a helpless Agamemnon was killed by Clytemnistra and Aegisthus as he took a bath. It was only after the death of Agamemnon that the story of Iphigenia re-emerged in Greek mythology, with Iphigenia appearing in the tale of her brother Orestes. When Artemis had substituted the deer for Iphigenia, the goddess had transported the daughter of Agamemnon to the land of the Tavri, a land normally equated with modern Crimea. Artemis then appointed Iphigenia as the priestess of the goddess temple in Tavris. Having escaped from becoming a human sacrifice, Iphigenia now found herself in charge of undertaking them, for the Tavri sacrificed all strangers to the land. Many years would pass, but then the paths of brother and sister would cross, for Orestes would come to Tavris. Having avenged the death of his father, Orestes was now being pursued by the Aeneas for killing his mother Clytemnistra, and it was said that Apollo told Orestes that by stealing the statue of Artemis from Tavris, he could solve his issue. Thus, Orestes and Pilades came to Tavris, but as strangers they were promptly arrested, and were said to be sacrificed. When Iphigenia came to the prisoners, there was no recognition between siblings, but Iphigenia did offer to release Orestes if he would take Aleta back to Greece. Orestes refused to go if it meant leaving Pilades behind to be sacrificed, and instead Orestes requested that Pilades go with Aleta instead. The letter written by Iphigenia proved to be the key to brother and sister recognizing each other, and so a new plan was put into operation. And with Iphigenia's knowledge, Iphigenia, Orestes and Pilades were soon on board Orestes' ship, leaving Tavris with the statue of Artemis in their possession. Even as Iphigenia, Orestes and Pilades returned to Greece, stories from Tavris preceded them, and it was said in these tales that Orestes had been sacrificed. This left Electra, the sister of Iphigenia and Orestes, devastated, but also emboldened Aletes, son of Aegisthus, who now seized the throne of Mycenae. In response to the news from Tavris, Electra traveled to Delphi to inquire what the future would now hold for her. Fate, of course, conspired to ensure that Electra arrived at the same time in Delphi as Iphigenia. But again, siblings did not recognize each other, and indeed Iphigenia was pointed out to Electra as the priestess who had sacrificed Orestes. Electra thus planned to kill the woman who had killed her brother, but as Electra was about to attack, Orestes would appear by Iphigenia's side, staying Electra's attack and explaining all that had gone on before. So, the three children of Agamemnon, now reunited, return to Mycenae and Orestes kills Aletes, and thus becomes ruler of the kingdom which was his birthright. The story of Iphigenia effectively comes to an end with the daughter of Agamemnon spoken of but infrequently afterwards. Some tell of her dying in the town of Megara, upon the smooth of Corinth, a town, coincidentally, which was the hometown of Calchas, the seer who would have sacrificed her. After her death, it was said that Iphigenia was a resident of the White Island, or Isles of the Blessed, the equivalent of paradise in Greek afterlife. It was also commonly said that in the afterlife Iphigenia was wed to Achilles, and thus, the promise which had seen her deliver to Avlis came to fruition. Let us finish with the following saying. Nobody lives the life he chooses to live. Man and there. That being said, remember guys to hit the like button and to subscribe to our channel, it would help us a lot. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for upcoming videos.